As you all know, we've been hard at work building out our dream van, and let me tell you, it's been quite the journey. But as they say, hindsight is 2020, and we've definitely learned a few things along the way. Today, we're sharing our van conversion regrets with you, so you can avoid making the same mistakes. Let's dive in. Comfortable. <laughs> These are so awkward. Good morning, everyone. We thought we'd take you through a few mistakes and regrets we have about our van build. Now, if you're new here, we have built, well, sort of rebuilt this Sprinter from, not from scratch, actually. We've actually pulled out the old build, rebuilt it again to our own specifications. But there are a few things that we wish we could go back and change. There we go. The first thing we'd like to change is... The rattan. <laughs> it's not part of our original list, but the rattan. Everyone knows how bad that looked. And each th it's not really part of the list, really, because it's really a personal preference. But have a look at this. Moving on. We did change it, though. <laughs> we have changed to something nicer, but that's, you know... That's personal preference as well. <laughs> I've just got notes here, so I'll bring that forward and I'll also put this back because Tim always looks at the viewfinder. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is our Wi-Fi. Now we went with RV Wi-Fi, which we thought was a really good buy at the time. It's a lot cheaper than, um, what's it called? Starlink. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper than Starlink. Um, we got it primarily because uh, one of the main problems we had, we had a dongle before in the van and when you had all the doors shut, it stopped working because essentially this is a Faraday cage and it stops any th radio signal getting in and out. Mm -hmm. With the RV Wi-Fi, you have an antenna on the outside and it comes through, attaches to the router or router, depending where you are. And then that also transmits inside the van. So that it worked a lot better um, transmitting inside to outside. We could have the door shut and that wasn't, wasn't a problem. The old system we they had before that, the little Telstra dongle, you had to wind the window down to get the signal to come in. It was oh. really weird. Sorry, could you, anyway. can you open that? Sorry. Oh. Anyway, moving on. So what we thought that we should have gone with was obviously Starlink. It takes up, but the reason why we didn't go with it initially is because we don't have a garage in here sort of, so storage is prime real estate mm. and the Starlink system is quite large and it's awkward shape and we always hear about you know people having to make um, space mm, very expensive space for them yeah but another reason is it was so dear and I thought oh I want this I want the um, one that roams the Starlink Rome which is permanently built or permanently attached to the roof of the van and well, you're looking at four thousand dollars for the kit, and then they wanted about three hundred and fifty dollars a month just to just to run it, just to run it. Whereas, like the normal, one, the standalone kit was one hundred and thirty dollars a month just to run it. But the standalone, we had no. We're thinking to ourselves, we have nowhere to put it. Where are we going to put this stuff? Uh, so we, that's why we went with RV Wi-Fi. Total regret. So that. in our wisdom, we had that. It, it works fine around the city, but then even some of the cities it's a bit odd uh, we got a Celtic booster which boosts the phone signal which is great but it doesn't really boost the Wi-Fi it, signal well, all it does is gives a better Wi-Fi signal to everyone else around you <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't actually help us it does. You, you turn the Celtic booster on and you're being in a remote area so turn the, turn the booster on and you'll start hearing people's around the campsite you can hear their notifications coming through as their yeah. phones find a signal <laughs> and then everyone hooks onto that and that slows our system down so it's yeah. it's not foolproof but it works to some extent but when we're going to go more rural we're going to have to invest in the starlink yeah it's going to be sooner rather than later i think um the next thing we have on our list is a vacuum now you think you're living in a small space, you don't need a vacuum and... You just sweep it out and mop it out, it out, out wipes, just... which, is, which is great, uh, but you just don't get those little crumbs, any other things like that. And that's when, and that's another thing, going to our previous episode, with the, the, the whole pests getting in the van, we want to eliminate any food sources for them and crumbs and, and, and food, food crumbs and, and, and the like. Is going to attract pests into your van especially roaches as well but even 
like getting into those nooks and crannies like even vacuuming around here and going inside the cupboards around the fridge and all that sort of stuff you really do need a vacuum and if we'd known for the build I think I would have built one in so it's you know one of those ones you can actually store <laughs> inside the bottom you're getting posh now aren't you? yeah I would like and one of those just plug the hose into the wall <laughs> kill me now <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. It'd, it'd be perfect for us, but there'd be that one time something goes up the pipe and then gets jammed, and then we'll have to have all the cabinets out just to get to inside the pipe. We ended up going with a. Oh, what was the brand you got? It's an AG um, site. It's quite vacuum. heavy, to be honest. Uh, it, look. But it's I, compatible with my power yeah. tools and rechargeable batteries. I think if you're just getting something for van life, you could get something like we saw at the um, camping show, something just small and, but yeah, I would definitely yeah, recommend portable, it. little 12 volt yeah. rechargeable ones I are quite good. I do recommend a vacuum. It was a mistake. We just realized once we were on the road. Yeah, it's not really a van build mistake, but if, <laughs> it's I would okay, have, don't worry, we have a few. I would have, <laughs> I would have built one in, as is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, next thing. Oh, this is a big one. This is a huge one. When we bought the van, the van came with aircon. And we thought, we don't need that. We don't really use it that much. We didn't, but it was winter. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, a couple of Max Air fans, windows, we put extra windows in. And it's great, but there's those days that the windows and the fans just can't cope with the humidity. Yeah, we... we once summer's over, you kind of forget about it. It's like you forget about the pain and it exits your brain. But really, 35 to 40 degree heat in a van, when you're living in it full time... With high humidity. ...is terrible. And not that I don't wish we took that aircon out because it was a heavy unit and it was on the roof, which causes a lot of problems with... Um, Stability when yeah, we go down the road. exactly. And also height clearance and as well. Weight. We were over 2.8 metres. And I think in Australia with the... Um, the toll roads. If you're over 2.8 meters, you get charged as. Oh, yes, yes, you get charged as a commercial vehicle. Oh, right. So it's a little bit more expensive. We're now below that. We're about 2.4. Oh, I don't yeah. think we've measured it properly, but yeah, about yeah, took a took a hit there. Took but, it down a long way. Mm, yeah, but we've now got a. Oh, what's the name? Truma. Oh. <laughs> We've now got a Truma Sapphire which sits underneath our um, one of our box seats bo at box the back. seats at the back, which takes up storage. But the thing is, you really have to find out what's important to you and what you need storage for. We just downsized to get that in there, and I thought that was way more important than the stuff I was. We um, shuffled a few things around. And we put shuffled. in some cupboards at the front, and that exactly that worked really well. But it is absolute game changer. It was a bit of a mission after the build to try and get it in because we had to then take out the cupboards in the kitchen area to, to run those cables to the front of the cab. And it, we were doing it in 40 degree heat, which was horrendous. Um, but there, it's in now, and so we're ready for next time. You wouldn't think so right now. It's like 23 degrees. <laughs> it's 23 it's degrees. Absolutely tipping raining. it down at the moment. It's lovely. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, that is the perfect weather condition. Yes, this is what we'd prefer. Um, but our whole idea was, well, eventually when we are traveling, we will be chasing cold weather. Um, and at the moment, you know, we have got house sits and it's not really a huge issue, but you know, future proofing. Mm. Air, if you're, if you're going out there and your, um, temperature is going to be above 35 degrees, Without question, you need air conditioning. Mm. And I heard someone say that um, isn't Max Air fans just doing the same job, but kind of feels like air conditioning. It does not when it's humid. When it's you've got high humidity, 80 percent plus, perhaps it's not going to do anything. Even our fridge struggled. It did, yeah. It, it, it was like, like cool. 14 degrees in there. Nothing went off. But <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we're vegetarians, eh? All right. Next thing is our skylight. Now. I'm more than happy with the skylight. I'm really happy we put it in. Except we didn't do research on different types of skylights we could have put in. In the Australian market, there isn't a great deal of choice or selection that you can go through. Um, when we were actually looking, all I could find was the Dometic style one and the Skymax one. And I watched a few things and they said it was really good and they're great, but for the cost of them, they are really, really quite a flimsy unit. And I've 
been to some caravan places since then and they do some much more robust, much better quality um, skylights than the, the Skymax one. And they I would, if I had to do it again, I would put one of those in because they are more, more robust. And the, even the blind thing. They even had the straps, you know, the- um, They had little gas straps. Gas straps, that that's in. it, yeah. They had Whereas the... this is just a, a, a rattly thing. It's great, love it. I love the skylight, honestly. I, I wish I had a better quality one in there. It's Especially bit... when we went really wet, uh, wet high quality with the windows and we were really impressed with that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely would have done a bit more research there. I mean, I love the skylight. It brings so much light in when we've got the bed down. We can wake up in the morning, open the skylight, have a look around, let some beautiful morning light in, and it's, it is perfect. So It had nothing to do with the leaking as well. We would have got the leak whether we got a good skylight or not. Yeah. Um, that was just a installation issue, which we won't mention, but it is, we, you know, we were in a rush when we were um, trying to get that in. But Anyway. Yeah, take your time, don't rush when you're putting stuff in the roof. Make sure you seal everything two or three times over. <laughs> and then add some extra. <laughs> Not forgetting those little screws. That you always but apart in. from that, apart from that, the skylight's fine, but I didn't think the quality held up to the price. Yeah. It was nearly $700, I think it was, which was a hell of a lot of money for a piece of plastic. Next. What have we got? Uh, oh, yes. We chose... RV labs for our latches on our cupboards. Now, RV labs, I don't think they're Australian, are they? They're, they're not, they're, they're an Australian US? company. Are uh, they? Yeah. they are an Australian company. Um, big channels have used their latches. And I really like them, they're, they're neat. Um, they look really good. They're, they're just smick as. But the problem is, the RV, you just have to make sure you pick the right cabinets to go with the latches. <laughs> Exactly. Um, we got IKEA cabinets and the problem with IKEA cabinets is they sort of the idea is they latch onto each other and which is fine the RV latches latch on but the problem is you've got all that weight and in a van you've on got one latch on one top. latch at the top which doesn't hold so we had to put extra beams in um, normally with a, a, a build you have a beam across each drawer and that's where you would attach That'd be it perfect. To. We didn't have that because of the design and the way it is designed. You can't really have that. So we had to put aluminium strips in and that worked really well. We've added Nightmare magnets. though to put in. Um, <laughs> or you we've had a few, if we go around a really tight corner going uphill, we sometimes get a random drawer fly open. But apart from that, really, really good. And the uh, the cabinet latches for the, the above cabinets, perfect I've never I didn't have any issue with them at all and they're really simple I think I would have got um, different latches just thinking about that extra thing we had to put in there it's just a bit of a I think I would have thought a little bit harder about maybe latching it onto the side with some something else yeah or... I think once again you'd be would we didn't want to damage the front of the cabinet I'm because very they're fussy with high the gloss cabinets. And we're going for the black and white and brown theme as well through the whole aesthetic. It does look nice, but... It does look nice. I'm talking about aesthetic. Does that move us on to our next thing about black sinks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> black sink looks beautiful, but it's an absolute nightmare to keep clean. Yeah, we went for um, another IKEA purchase. It was a black sink, but it was a matte finish black, and it looks great. It, it matches everything in here. <laughs> but... Um, I don't know, can anyone tell me what colour toothpaste is? <laughs> Maybe we should get some black toothpaste. <laughs> you can actually get them. Yeah. But anyway... Um... We'll get some, we'll let you know. <laughs> but anyway, any salt, soap scum, anything like that, it leaves a white residue in the sink. And because it's not a gloss finish, it's more of a Sticks. matte finish. I don't it know just, why we didn't think about you it. You need to scrub it. And then we ended up putting a... a, a a little portable foldable sink in there now a white one. to um, take up all of that stuff <laughs> but we still get a residue you, you can't help it like you get watermarks and stuff like so that. so I think what we would have preferred to put in there and it may have changed the look of the van but I think we would have got other things to match but we would have got a white gloss sink just so everything's smooth it'll everything go down the sink you well, can't it, see toothpaste it, it, you can't see any of that even a gloss black one would have been easier would have been better i think the the matte finish it looks lovely, don't go for matte but it just it it just holds the stains <laughs> it we're constantly wiping this this thing out like it's it's a an hourly occurrence you don't understand <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that bad but yes 
you need to, if you're living in it full time, you need to go through your van at least once a day, just to tidy up, clean up, wipe things down, just to keep it. Anything on top to help of you though, just things like that. Dust is the killer. <laughs> Dust settles on everything. And it's not just human dust, it's like tra um, when you travel, it comes in through the bit back doors. Especially um, when you're in that, we haven't been out in the outback with this yet, but I have seen that, just, I've witnessed it myself with, when I've been working in the outback. The red dust just gets in every door sill. I'm yet to experience that. It gets everywhere and it stains. And that's what I'm scared of, I don't want to take it out. Oh, you think you're gonna have an <laughs> orange glow on our van? Although, we've got an orange theme. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's talk sockets and electrical. Uh, we, we've we got a lot of, um, what are they called? 240 volt. <laughs> we've we got know. a lot of 240 volt sockets, which is great. The problem we do, we do have is having enough USB and USB-C cable, not cables, when you're planning, sockets. When you're planning your build, and I thought I'd got it right, and I thought, oh, I won't need a socket here. I don't know why you didn't put a I socket don't know, in the back. But I do. I, I ended up having to put a socket this side, but I put it further down. Um, and positioning the sockets, you're not sure where they go. Make sure and, and try and think through as well. We put a socket here for Sandy for uh, when the bed's down. Oh, but let me just add to that. But it's the a socket with is, bright light in it, so now I have to put a dot in the middle. Yeah. Um, the, the other problem was if you left your lead in and it got caught in the bed mechanism as it came down, it we broke a couple of leads that way, so like. Yeah, it should have been placed the on the other side, placement. so when you move the bed up and down, it doesn't get caught. I think it still would have got caught. Anyway, the point <laughs> being. <laughs> Make sure you've got enough, enough. and they're in the places that you want them. Even if you think you've got enough, add a couple extra. If you think, oh, I'm not going to need one there, put one there anyway. USB sockets, you can have. Especially with us, we have cameras coming out of our ear rolls. Um, if something needs a charge, a phone needs something a charge, a laptop always needs need a charge. Charging, and it'll be cameras. in a place where you don't have the socket. <laughs> it's amazing. That's why in the office area up the front there, where we're using it as an office, there, there's a plethora of USB sockets up there, plus 240 volts as well. Yeah, what I find is I, I actually find myself coming down here to edit more often, and I'm finding that there's not enough down here. So we put yeah. it, we've put two extra... Two or three? No, two extra in at the back here, um, which also have USB-C. But USB-C is is now popular, so you can get those ones where you've got USB and USB-C, and they are perfect. And they've got a little um, lid over the top, so if you don't want that bright light, you can just shut it, which is great. Yeah, a little rubber waterproof cap thing. Well, it's not waterproof; it's just a dustproof thing. But yeah, yeah, it's light that bothers me, so that's um, that works really well. All right, now cushions. Cushions? Oh, cushions, yeah. <laughs> well, there's two There's two parts to this. Um, initially, we had, oh, what are they, 100 mil, 100 mil thick memory foam Memory foam cushions for the back here. Oh, cushions, not cushions. Um, what are they, what would you call these? Seat bases. Seat bases and seat backs. And um, they're quite firm. We got them custom cut and a friend of ours, Kay, actually made our cushion covers for us. Cushion covers, love them. The cushions themselves, like the actual memory foam, the bottoms are fine firm wise. It's just that the back here, it was like leaning against a brick wall. Yeah, the, it, the, the memory, the denser foam was there to take the body weight, but not your leaning weight. You're leaning back, it was like, oh. <laughs> it was like really uncomfortable, and you felt like you should have put a cushion behind and it. And I hear that. what you're saying, just put cushions there, it'll be fine. It was not fine because the more cushions you have, the, the less, more less issue. room you have. <laughs> We, we came down with cushions at one point and we got we, we, we had a cull and we kept three. That was it. <laughs> I've got three. Oh yeah, I've only got three, mm, three now. We yes. had a couple of extra Paris ones. We were like, no! <laughs> so what we've done now is we've kept Kay's lovely cushions and we've put pillows in them. So now I think it still needs a bit of a lift at the bottom which we'll, we'll you know, we'll have to figure something out later on. But now when you sit down it's like, oh, it's, it You're feels enveloped. like a couch. You're enveloped. It's by lovely. luxuriousness. <laughs> Enveloped. Enveloped. It wraps around you and hugs you. The van hugs you when you sit. That's lovely. <laughs> I know all the vans, the builds when they, especially if you take one to be professionally built, they'll put in the cushions and they'll have like the straight thing and there's like, you know, mm. it looks nice and looks neat, but practicality wise, we it's actually not found that, that comfortable. Uh, recycling the foam from out of the, out of an old 
sofa actually work better because they were designed specifically and exactly. had the right density. They've got, they've, sorry. So it's, yeah, it's, they've got the right, yeah, so that they feel like a chair, a normal house chair. So why don't you, wouldn't you want your van to feel like a normal yeah. chair? You're like, yeah. And we're, gonna, Weird. And we're not furniture makers, so you, 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 you think phone, phone's phone. It's not. So yeah, it's expensive. Maybe in the future we'll replace um, the interior of this with a softer foam, but at the moment pillows are working great. <laughs> yeah, just cheap pillows, like bed pillows. Not yeah, like it's fine. Pillow it's it's lovely. So back to our black fittings. We wish we would have continued the black fittings on the exterior of the van. Now let me explain something about stealth camping. Someone was obsessed with being stealth. It's not the fact that the van doesn't look like a camper van. It's the fact that you just don't get seen because you're going somewhere late at night and you're leaving early in the morning. So it doesn't really matter what your van looks like as long as you don't. Yeah, I mean we've got people. we've got sand van written all over our van. It looks like a camper. I mean, come on, guys, if you've got if you've got a um, awning at the side and solar and max air fan, you're a camper van. No, no one's stupid. They're going to work it out. Um, so being stealth isn't trying to keep everything sort of clean and neat on the outside what it really is is people do not want to see you living in the van the whole thing is um, it's your keeping impact everything on their blacked environment out. yeah keep everything blacked out don't let anyone see you living in there um, so anyway it brings me to the point where we were trying to be stealth um, we got well, the wrong idea there, there was a conversation about this water filler point hmm. and I thought the black one looked much better than the white one and I thought no, we had to be stealth because I had the wrong idea about it and, I, and you know I regret that and I wish we could have got a black fittings on the outside because what happens with the white fittings is they discolour in the sun and our one is now a horrible like a yellow. And <laughs> custardy yellow, it's not really it's, nice and so, it makes it look old. And it makes it look like a camper van, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> makes it look even worse. So that exterior fittings, it's very hard when you're putting them on a white van the UV and our UV is extreme here, it destroys the plastic. So black ones don't seem to have that problem. I haven't seen that problem so much on the black You'll ones. You'll find it's probably um, this colour grey or something, but even that would be nice. It's better than the yellow custard colour that we've got. That's tremendous. All right, the last thing on, I think it's the last thing on our list, is it? Last thing of our sort of regrets that we don't, it's not killing us that we regret it. If we you, just would like to sort these things out. Yeah. <laughs> but it will cost more money. The last thing on our list is batteries. Now, we knew that our AGM batteries were on their way out, but we thought, it'll be fine. Let's just stick with them until they While actually they're still die. Working, they'll be fine. Why would you stick with them until they actually die? If you know they're on the way out, don't. Replace them before they die, because what happened was we headed first off. First week on the road. Yeah, we headed off first week on the road and our system completely crashed. Um, <laughs> they went, see ya. So then we didn't have anywhere to work on the van to replace these. We had to go find new batteries when we we're on the road and it wasn't we ideal. We changed them in the campsite at the end, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Uh, so look, we had to book into a campsite and get power uh, from there because we had no power for anywhere else. And oh yeah, so we've gone with um, now lithium batteries again. 360 amp hour lithium batteries I believe. We had to change all the cabinetry, we had to change some of the wiring. Because they're different size um, batteries. Just to upgrade. Um, <clears throat> there, was a, there was a few issues there. Um, having to, even the B2B charger had to be set up differently and it wasn't big issues, they were just mm. more like we should have done this at the beginning issues. Yeah, we should have done this while we had a place to actually do this and probably done it at the start. So when we're running those cables from the solar panels and everything, it wasn't such an issue trying to like mm. get it all through to the to the battery. So yeah, just make sure your system, your electrical system, you're happy with um, to head out on the road straight away because it's a, probably the most important, it's the heart of the van and it needs to be working. Yeah, and you may think you've got it conveniently placed in a garage, it looks really great, but when you're actually in there and you have to rip it out and start again, <laughs> Nothing's convenient. <laughs> yeah, make it easy to get to. But all in all, we are so pleased with our van and how it's turned out now. It's been a few pitfalls along the way. There's a few things that need changing, and if they get too tired or they break in the future, they will get sorted. But please stick around for the next few videos because we are doing a long-awaited van tour. I think we're in a couple of weeks, I think two weeks, we'll have our van tour out and you'll be able to see all the nitty-gritty of our van, what we chose and why and um, all the good stuff, not just the bad stuff we mentioned. <laughs> 
You like to see all the good stuff. We give you some Instagram stuff. Yeah, and we're also doing a. We guarantee slow mos, epic music. <laughs> we're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> and our van will look bigger than the house that you're living in at the moment. <laughs> Gotta get those camera angles. We're also doing another video we'll do the cost breakdown, of we? costs, of how much things cost and maybe where we got them from and that sort of thing. We won't do it in the same uh, video because our, it'll just be too long because we love talking about our van and we'll be here forever. I don't even know how... Do we I, like talking about our van? I don't even know how long this video's noticed. been going. I may need to cut it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll be doing those two videos if you're interested. Please click the subscribe button and click the bell so you know when they're coming out. And uh, we will see you next week for another exciting episode. Always leave a comment. And if you want a sticker, leave us a message on our email yep. or through our socials and we'll send you a sticker free of charge to anywhere in the world. And if you'd like to do a sticker exchange, we'd love to have a sticker to put on our sticker wall. Yes, we still do the sticker wall. I know we haven't done uncut in a while, but we will be getting back to that shortly. Yes. But we will see you next week. Bye.